Well, this is going to be exciting. We are here with the mighty man of God. Heritage OG. Right? 16 years and counting, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, Pastor Vic Boone, how are you, sir? I'm good. We are so happy you're here. This is an amazing uh, conversation, amazing opportunity for myself. I really am excited, but I'm sure. Me too. Oh, well, good. <laughs> oh, good. There she is. Me as well. Um, there are so many things I want to ask you about. Um, okay. At, since my wife and I started coming to this church, you were always just a fixture of personality here. You know, it's something nice about hearing you in the front. <laughs> not, 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 how do I say this? Like the pastor's best hype man. Like I I'm, was just thinking right? that. I was just thinking every hype time, man. Yes. Every time Pastor yes. Jester or something gets going, all of a sudden you, I hear you just giving amazing verbals. Yes. And I'm not a verbal receiver when it comes to like when people preach the word, I get quiet. I, mm -hmm. I start to really get focused in on what they're mm -hmm. saying and I don't say anything. And I'm always happy when someone else does. Yeah. I'm like, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yes. I agree with him. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Right, man. That's perfect. Right? Yes. It's great. And so I've gotten the pleasure to to be able to meet you and get to know you. We we do restore together now and just He's a Thrive Group leader. Actually, um I was a Thrive Group leader almost ten years. Wow. I, I was one of the first ones that started Thrive Group with Jim and Patty Gordon. Oh, nice. I was one of the first ones. And um, I had this surgery um, in 2021. I had one in 2022. And I had to step down because I couldn't walk for 10 months. So I just had to step away. Because each month they have the thrive groups, and mm -hmm. I couldn't be there because I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. So, you know, it was that was kind of difficult, you know, for me because, you know, I'm wanting to do something for God, but I couldn't. And you know that that was very hard, but that let that allowed me time to talk to God. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a thrive group leader, you know when you up talking, you know, we, we read scripture, we talk about scripture, but how is this affecting your life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, well, what is it doing for you right now? And, you know, we talk in our Thrive groups about everything, healing, righteousness, what the pastor preached for everything. And so I'm looking at myself, I'm like, after this second surgery, my left hand was totally paralyzed. I don't know if y'all knew that, but mm -mm. my left hand was totally paralyzed. I went in surgery on April 5th of 2022. And then when I woke up that from anesthesia after my surgery, my hand was totally paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't use it. And they told me it'll be several months if it come back. And they said I might have had a, a stroke during the operation. And, it, and I'm like, no. And I'm just being honest. The, I really got discouraged. And I told him, I said, look, I know that I haven't had a stroke. I know I haven't. I was fine when I walked in here mm -hmm. until y'all started <laughs> cutting on me. Yeah. And now my I can't use my hand and I can't walk. Mm. Oh man, it was it was it was tough. But I remember what the word of God said. He said that I'm healed. Mm -hmm. And I just kept saying that I'm healed. I'm healed. And today <clears throat> God has re totally restored me. My hand, I'm walking. I, they told me I wouldn't walk for uh, eight months to a year. Four months later, I was walking. They told me my hand may not come back. If it did, it'd be two to six months. It was, it did. It came back in exactly two months, but I was constantly speaking the word over my body. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite parts about the heritage community, the heritage culture, is there's so many stories in our leadership and just in our body as uh, people who've stood on their healing, who just stood on the word, stood on what it says, and there's just testimony after testimony of just people who've like, I was told this, but that's not what the word says, and so I'm going with the word, and here I am today. And I love that you get to say that. That's so great. So apart from being... At Heritage for 16 years, you were also 
uh, JSM or you are a JSMI Bible School alumni. Yes. You were you're a former uh, Thrive Group leader. I want to know how you got to Heritage. How did you get to this point? Wow, that I, I'm I'm really glad you asked me that. I, <laughs> I, I was hoping you somebody asked that. <laughs> well, um, I was well, I was looking to go to Bible school. I was working full time in Grand Prairie. Uh, at a furniture uh, business. And I heard the call of God to say, go to Bible school. So what I did, I, I went and signed up to go to Southwest Theological Seminary over off of Crowley Road here in Fort Worth. And so I got to go in there, and I just didn't feel this is where I'm supposed to be. I, 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 I felt it inside. This is mm-hmm. not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm going to give you kind of a short story, but I woke up one morning. We was laying in bed, and I woke up about 6 o'clock. I I remember. It was about 6 o'clock, and Brother Copeland was on. My wife was sleeping. I I turned it on. I said, it caught my attention. He was talking to a guy by the name of Bear Morgan. I I didn't know him. But his testimony sounded a lot like mine. He had been to prison, mm-hmm. and he he was on drugs, had been on drugs and alcohol. He was just a rough character. And that got, that got my attention. And I sat there and I watched it. And uh, they were interviewing him. And now he have a church with about 250 members. And... Uh, I was listening to all of this, man. It, it just stood out at me, man. That that guy just like me. And so when it was over, they put on the screen a, a phone number for Kenneth Copeland. So I got the phone number and I called Kenneth Copeland Ministries and asked them, "What do y'all preachers um, go to uh, Bible school?" And the lady told me, "Jerry Savell Ministries." <laughs> I've heard of Jerry Savelle Ministry, but I, I didn't know where it was at. They say, it's in Crowley. Well, this is so strange. I lived only five minutes from here. Five minutes for several years, yeah. and I never found this place. Never. That was, that was you know, something to me. Mm-hmm. And so I called... Jerry Savelle Ministries that Monday morning. This was on a Sunday when I saw it on television. Mm-hmm. I called Monday morning. It was a lady by the name of Kathy Romans working at JC oh, yeah, uh, I know her. KCM. <laughs> yeah. She answered the phone and I asked her, Where do the ministers go to uh Bible school here? And she gave me all the information and she said, well, you can come by here. And so I went up there and talked to her. And while I was talking to her, Patty Gordon came in. (laughs) And the rest is history. And I I got signed up and I told him, I said, well, I don't know if I want to do this because really I like sports. I don't like reading, especially (laughs) the Bible. (laughs) You know, the Bible is, I like reading. But I read, like, Sports Illustrated, just sports magazine. That's all I like reading. I don't like reading the Bible. Yeah. And then Patty walked out, and she said, oh, yeah, you'll be good. You can do this. <laughs> and and the rest is history. I got in into it. I signed up, and I was working full time. And I did level one and level mm-hmm. two. And it was a lot of nights I sit up to one and two in the morning. My wife would say, you better go to bed. You got to get up. I had to be at work at six. So it it was, I was determined. I was determined. I, I had a desire to, to know the word of God. I mm-hmm. wanted it. I was tired of living that life. Yeah. That street life. I, I was around drugs all my life. I was around hustlers. That's what I was around. That's what I knew. And, but I knew that wasn't me. I, I could hear my mom saying, Vic, don't be hanging around them boys. They're going to get you in trouble. And sitting in that cell, I could hear her telling me that. And I said, I got to change. And I had a desire, and God came in and did it for me. 
you know, and it was through the Bible school. The Bible school had put so much word in me mm-hmm. that now, I mean, I just catch myself saying stuff. It's just like it just just come out, I, you know. And my wife used to say, tell me sometime we'd be talking, and she would say, all you do is talk the Bible. You know, sometimes when you just talk to me right, I said, well, you know, and I'm like, well, that, that's that's what's in me. You know, the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance that that you put in you. Yeah. So I had been making some new deposits into my life. Mm-hmm. And so now my I noticed all of a sudden my language and started changing. And so, it, you know, I, I really thank God because that's how I got here was by watching Kenneth Copeland on television one morning and I got a phone number and that led me to him. It's amazing. So uh, your mother was, was a woman of faith. Yes. Were you raised in, in the church? Were you raised with faith? Or? Yes. Well, I was raised in the Pentecost church. Hey, the Holy Rollers. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't... I, I like the way they have church. They know how to praise God. But it, for me, I didn't get enough word. I'd go to church. I feel good. I leave. And then when I leave... I'm walking down the street, firing up a cigarette or joint. Mm. Or some it wasn't no substance mm-hmm. to help me. Okay. And it was a long time that I was there, you know. But it never, you know. I, I mean, that's what got me started. But I knew it was more. I knew it was, you know. And uh, I remember my wife telling me. She said, uh, "We had, we was in in." this church, and she said, Vic, she said, the Lord said it's time for us to go. And, you know, me, you know, how men are. I said, well, he ain't told me that. (laughs) So (laughs) so we we stayed. And, and, you know, I was driving uh, in my truck one day, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, how can two walk together if they can't agree? And I knew what he was talking about. So I called her and told her, I said, we got to leave. I said, Lord, just spoke to me. <laughs> she said, well, when you going to call the pastor and let him know? I said, I'm not going to call him. I'm going by right now and talk to him. So I drove to his house and talked to him and told him that the Lord had told us it's time to go. And he asked me, where, did, where was I going? I told him, yeah, I, did I know where I was going? I said, yes, I do. And I told him and... He said, I understand the Lord did me like that when I was in Virginia. He told me he understood. And then I came here. But I I still didn't know. One night, I got off work real late. And uh, my wife was home with the baby. Kennedy was a baby then, and she wasn't feeling good. It was late, almost 7. And she said, Vic, it's late, say, it's going to take you a while to get out there, so why don't you just go by that church you was telling me about and check it out and see how it is. But before that, let me back up a little bit. God showed me in a dream this church before I ever came here. Yeah, that's what, we've heard this before, and it's crazy. It's so crazy. God showed me in a dream this church, and In the dream, I was standing in the lobby, Mm. and then the door was open, and God was standing behind me. And I was looking in to the lobby. The doors was open, Mm. and the seats were red like they are now. So when I was standing in the double doors looking into the sanctuary, it was me up there behind the pulpit preaching. Did you ever have any desire to be a minister throughout your life, or did that just like in this dream? I never dream, had it was just, a desire. Yeah, I, I didn't, but I knew at about eleven years old that God would, had called me to minister. I knew it. Um, my sister, my oldest sister Jane, she um, told me. She said, "God said that you're gonna preach one day," <laughs> and uh, 
And I told her, I said, Jane, I said, well, don't be praying for me because I'm not going to preach. I don't want to <laughs> preach. And that's what I told my sister. She said, well, don't be ugly. Say, God don't like ugly. <laughs> you know. I'm and, gonna use that line. <laughs> and so I, and I'm like, okay. I said, but I'm not gonna preach. And I didn't have a desire to preach. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be one of the boys. You, you know? are cool though. You know, but but then I back then I drove uh <laughs> in the tenth grade I had like a, a 1970 Chevelle Malibu with the you know how you had the big wheels and the Kragers and mm-hmm. and man I mean had the bangs up in and I thought I was cool you know because you that, were because you were this is right. what I wanted yeah. to be but I didn't want to be no preacher because to me that wasn't cool so you ran the other way I ran yeah for a long time until God I couldn't run no more and when I stopped running was when I ended up in jail, that's when I stopped running. How many times had you been in jail before before finally coming to this moment where you were like, I can't run any further, I can't? Mm-hmm. I don't know, several times. So. Several times that my mother had to come and bail me out. Yeah. Do you think, because I... My story is not the same as yours, but there's a lot of similarities in terms of just running away from things and what you lean to. But I see you now in a place of authority and leadership to be able to really reach people that have unique situations, that you can speak into their life. You can speak healing, restoration. You have so much of these experiences in life that play perfectly into a ministry like yours. I mean, you know, you're the, one of the, the leaders of the Restore here at church. Yes. And that's completely helping people with struggles, addiction, strongholds. And it's something you have such, you know, a great background with. I mean, is that, like, is it, do you think about how God's used your, your, your entire story just to let you tell his? Yes. Well, I just, you know, for a long time, I really didn't think that I could preach because the enemy was telling me, you're no good. Mm-hmm. You're just a heathen. You're a little thug. You're no good. God can't use you. But then when you go and you read the word of God, you study the word, the disciples that God chose, they weren't perfect. Yeah. <laughs> they made mistakes. <laughs> and the more I began to read that and see how some of the disciples were, then I began to look at myself differently, you know, when and I read the word and it said that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who I am, mm-hmm. regardless of what I did. Yeah. Because the blood washed away all of that. So I had to I had to get that in me. I, I it was it wasn't until I learned this that I was able to forgive me. God had forgave me. God had already forgiven everything that I had done. He had already forgiven me. And I would go back and say, Lord, will you forgive me? You know, I I was in jail and I did this and I did that and I was smoking weed and I was drinking. and And I'm asking God over and over again to forgive me. And God said, I've already forgiven you. You know, and mm-hmm. I've repented, yeah. but I still couldn't forgive myself. And then I read in the Word where the Word says that God is faithful and just mm-hmm. to forgive us mm-hmm. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. No matter what I've done, yeah. He forgiven me. And the problem was I had to learn how to forgive myself, mm-hmm. regardless of everything that I had already done. You know, because Satan will take your past and he'll beat you up with it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And tell you you ain't nothing. Yeah. You're never going to be nothing. You're going to be just like your no good daddy or your uncle or whoever, you know. <laughs> that, that, that's the way he, he yeah. put thoughts in your mind. And, and you like, well. Or that you'll never escape it. It'll come back. Don't yes. worry. It'll come back. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to come back. Yeah. On it's going to come back. Yeah, it's going to come back. And we we've always heard. You just reaping what you sow, you mm-hmm. know. They, they'll say things like that. Boy, you just going to reap what you sow. And one of the things that I tell people today is 
people say, uh, don't, it don't bother me what you say about me, but yes, it does. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, you know, you might beat me with sticks and or uh, with your fists, you know, beat me up or whatever. I'll heal from that those wounds, but words are last forever. You know, we we say things like sticks and stone may break my bones, but words mm -hmm. will never hurt you. Oh, that's mm -hmm. not true. I remember things that that men told me back in the day that I, I used to hang out at the cafes late uh, at night. They thought I was a lot older than I was and because I was hanging out and, and smoking and doing all this. And and, and they were telling me, boy, you're going to end up dead. Uh, Somebody's going to kill you or you're going to end up in prison if you don't change your way. They would speak all of this stuff over me. And now my mind is starting to think that, yeah. you know. And so I'm like, okay, what do? how do I escape this? And it, I'm telling y'all, it was times where I got shot at, you know. I mean, I don't know who did shot at me, but I heard it pff, go right by my ear. Mm. I remember one time laying in my bed, and somebody came and, and tried to throw a, one of those bottles with gas in the rag, Throw it and it hit the side of my my Most off, cocktail. Wall. Yeah, you know, and stuff like that. that. But that was the life that I was living because people had spoke stuff into my life, and I didn't know the power of words. But God was yet protecting me even then. Mm -hmm. How do you stay so consistent in your faith now? I mean, I know you're obviously in a much better place than you were, but what's something that you could say to people who are struggling now, how to stay like constant, constantly in faith and pushing to heal? Stay in the word, read the word of God. It's not, you don't have to read a chapter a day or two chapters a day. You can read one scripture and just meditate on that scripture until you get it down into your heart yeah. and you get used to it. And then all of a sudden, if you read in little by little, you'll begin to get spiritually strong. See, we, we, we're we fighting against a spirit. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. It's not me fighting against someone else. For the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I'm not fighting against my brothers and, and sisters. You know, it, this is a spiritual warfare yeah. that's going on. And I know that Satan is the one behind it. But I didn't know then. And anybody that don't know, I want to tell you that God say that his people perish for the lack of knowledge. You have to get into the word of God and find out what you have a right to. You have authority over the enemy. God said, I have given you authority over serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Once you get that down in you and realize who you are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. you, you don't worry about it. You, you know, you just overcome. I have no desire whatsoever to use any type of drugs, drink. I can go around people. It don't bother me. Yeah. God totally delivered me from it all. That's amazing. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of the the what Pastor Justin just said recently about your hunger is is dictates if you're you know if someone's sick they lose their appetite mm -hmm. and spiritually if we're not hungry for the word it's it's indication that we might be spiritually sick. Right. You know. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah. And where you're, I, I love when you talk about you just had a desire for the word, you know, uh, and what was it? He was saying like, desire to see his face versus his hand mm -hmm. type of comparison. And that's the stuff that's so awesome that that desire to see his face, desire to be in the word is where we're sitting here now. The, right. The fruit of yeah. that, the fruit of that was so, is still so powerful. So I'm mean, just curious, this whole process that you've gone through in terms of your life, how, how has that played out in terms of you as a family man, as a husband, as a father? 
Like, how does that look? How does it play out now with your with your walk, with your faith, with your leadership? It plays out really good. Um, my children and uh, my wife, they all are very, very supportive of me in everything that I do for for his ministry. And uh, especially my wife, she always supported me when I go on my trips to Africa. She won't go, but she <laughs> always support me and, <laughs> and tell me, hey, you're called to go. You, you go, and we'll be here when you get back. And now, I, I mean, my children are doing very well. They got they self-employed. Um, and I got a son that's uh, uh, teaching in Eastern Hills High School, and they just uh, give him a coaching job. All right. And then y'all know Kennedy. She mm-hmm. graduated uh, May the 13th and from TCU. Nice. And uh, she's already working at Brandy Austin Law Firm in criminal wow. law. Yeah. Okay. And so they, they, they've seen my life. Um, Kennedy don't know anything about everything that I've talked about. All she know is her daddy is a preacher. That's all she ever mm-hmm. know. Of. But the older ones, they they know, and I talk to them, and and I refuse to allow them to be like I was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, my son, he was um, when he was in high school, he was, had friends come by and try to get him to take him places, and they were smelling like marijuana and stuff. And you know, when you're a teenager, you you know you think you know everything, and I told him. I know you're not going anywhere with them, and then they smelling like marijuana. You know, you pull off and you get stopped, and they put the stuff in the car. You going to jail? No, you're not going with them. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he would get literally mad at me and <laughs> and buck up to me, you know. <laughs> but as a father, I stood my ground. I yeah. did, it. and I told him, I don't care what you do. You're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. But long story short, he come back. After he graduated from A and M Commerce with a bachelor's degree, and told me, he said, "Dad, thank you for being so hard on me." Yeah, it's probably and it brought more tears times we to my to eyes. Your parents. <laughs> that really brought. Now you're talking about bringing tears. Yeah. That that brought tears to my eyes because he would always say, "Well, you don't love me." You know, love is hard. Mm-hmm. Love, you know, if you, the Bible say, if you love your child, you'll chastise them if you love them. But if you don't, you let them do whatever. And then they end up in trouble, you know, but you got to chastise your children. You have to, to save their life. And he he came back and he told me, he said, Dad, he said, thank you for being so hard on me. That really, really blessed me. My sister's. They they look up to me. I'm the youngest of eight in my family. Wow. What? The youngest <laughs> of eight. And my sisters, they, they wouldn't come to my house because of the lifestyle I lived. Yeah. You know, I had guns in the house and drugs and everything. So they wouldn't come, and they, they, they just would not come visit me. And now they come visit me, and... They want to have stuff in my house. When I got hurt, my oldest sister, Jane, she came, stayed with me for a week after I had the surgery, I'm, you know. And then when she said, well, Vic, I can only stay for one week. I say, but I'm going to call Deb, Deborah, and tell her to come. And when she come, then I'll come back <laughs> once I take care of my business. But they, they, they really treat me well, my wife say they spoil me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's okay. I'm just being honest. That's I mean, okay. they they come over and they. I mean, when they stay with me, they cook my breakfast. They bring it to me. They now, but they, before where, they where wouldn't they even come to my house. I would. I want my brothers to listen to this episode. They would not <laughs> even come to my house before all of this. Before I got saved and give my life to the Lord, they wouldn't come to my house. They didn't want them to have nothing to do with their baby brother. Because they knew how I was, you know. And so we have a good relationship, my family, my children. And matter of fact, my uh, daughter, Kelsey, 
she just called me and said, Dad, I'm I'm sending you some money on Zell. I know you're going to Africa. I wanna I wanna bless you. That's you know, so I nice. talk I teach them about sowing, yeah. seed, giving. Whatever, if you want something, you gotta have to sow a seed. So I teach them about that. So she said, I'm gonna sow a seed into you, into your ministry. This is my daughter, you know. So I teach them what I've been taught. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And I tell them, the plan will work if you work it. If you don't, it won't. So it is. We got a good relationship. That's so good. So our reoccurring question on this podcast, our motto at Heritage is making winners in life. We want to know what that means to you. For me, it means me going out, not just not inside these four walls. Mm -hmm. Me going out in the streets and and telling people about Jesus Christ and leading them to the Lord. If I my job is to go out and bring them in. And then the pastor's job is to feed them the word and get them, get them saved. And so right after this broadcast, I got to leave and go to the hospital and visit somebody. And then when I do that, then I'll come back to church tonight. This, to me, is making winners in life. You know, I mean, I feel like God gave me a chance. Mm -hmm. Now I got to go out and help somebody. I got to give back what has been given to me. So good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Can't top that. <laughs> <laughs> well, amazing. thank you so much for being here with us today. And thank you, listeners. Um, we're so honored to have this time with such a mighty man of God. And linked in the show notes, we'll have more information about um, Pastor Vic's ministry, and we will see you next week for more winning conversations.